Hey folks, if you're looking for in-depth indie reviews, you're in the right place, and today I'll be tackling another title by Toge Productions, specifically the sequel to their visual novel Coffee Talk, aptly named Episode 2, Hibiscus and Butterfly. But was the second serving a solid brew, or did I wind up having a lot of tea to share? I'm your host Arlian, let's find out together. The premise is the same as before. The place is Seattle, but not quite ours, given that the streets are replete with orcs, elves, and other sundry creatures. And yet, there's a certain mundanity to the whole. After all, you play the role of a humble coffee shop owner whose quaint establishment provides a late night refuge to the various denizens of the city. Admittedly, business is a bit slow given the odd hours you favor, but it's allowed you to build a small but loyal customer base, one which players may already be acutely familiar with from the first game. Still, while the faces may mostly be the same, there are new challenges to tackle alongside them, and even some opportunities to explore the city's history. Premise aside, I would like to note that while you will likely get more enjoyment out of the game's story if you have the context from the first game, especially when it makes allusions towards a certain secret element of the narrative, it's not actually required viewing. Hibiscus and Butterfly does a decent enough job of providing a standalone experience given that all of the various issues which crop up are essentially self-contained within this game. As for the content itself, well... It's an altogether down-to-earth experience. While there is a small mystery at the heart of this title, involving some spooky vandalism, that's one of many plot threads, with the majority of them being more down-to-earth issues, like a vampire dealing with career-related burnout, a couple trying to figure out how to organize their wedding, or a content creator trying to figure out how to tackle the subjects he's passionate about. It's not overly hard to find something that might resonate with you, What's more, this episode actually addressed some of my issues in the original Coffee Talk, and what I mean by this was the way the story progresses. In the original entry in this series, you brew drinks and pass them off to clients in order to advance the story. That said, the story didn't really branch. If you gave someone the wrong drink, they'd comment on your mistake, but things didn't really differentiate all that much until the climax. That said, this time around, you'll definitely notice some fairly large differences because entire plot threads will tank. Some characters will have different interactions, and one character will even remove themselves from the plot entirely, which will in turn influence ongoing dialogue with other characters. It feels better overall, and also leads to a larger number of ending permutations to explore due to this more interlinked storytelling process. As for the gameplay, well, this is an element that more or less feels the same. Once more, you're mixing drinks to progress the story, with the largest differences this time around being the addition of two new types of teas, which in turn broadens the amount of drinks you can whip up for your patrons. Well, that and an inventory system, specifically one which allows you to deliver items to a client along with their drink in order to further progress or change the story. It's not a bad idea, but ultimately it doesn't overly change things up beyond the occasional test of your memory, especially given that the objects in your inventory will actually vanish if you've missed your chance at handing them over when it's narratively appropriate. Otherwise, this, this feels very akin to its predecessor, up to and including the endless challenge mode for you to fiddle around with drinks, not that I was inclined to even to this day. I mean, yes, it does provide the opportunity to fiddle around with brand new drinks that you might not otherwise see, and there is a lot of neat details put into the drink portraits, but well, you can just tackle the normal endless mode if you really want to do that. Oh, and while I'm on the subject of looks, the game does still do a decent job at looking cozy. If anything, the shop looks nicer than before, and the new characters are definitely fairly fun to observe. Really, the only nitpick that I have about the animations is that they'll continue to play out at normal speed, even if you're trying to fast forward to the chapters during a second playthrough. A fact that can seriously bog down segments where you're going through already seen dialogue. It honestly made me quite grateful that the music was so relaxing because it helped to stave off a lot of mental exhaustion. And, well, that's the thing at the end of the day. While Episode 2 of Coffee Talk certainly boasts more insofar as story and ending permutations, if you're eager to see 
everything the game has to offer, you're in for a bit of tedium. That's not to say I dislike the narrative. I found the overall differences your choices made notably more interesting, even without the quirk that came with the original game's New Game Plus. That said, I still found myself just sitting there skipping already seen dialogue for sizable chunks of time, all in search of key choices to make in order to tweak the ongoing story and the ending. And the game's mechanics are, well, simple enough that while the act of figuring out a recipe in order to unlock dialogue options can be fun, it winds up feeling a bit like busy work by the end of the day. Ultimately, I did enjoy this entry more than its predecessor to the point that I can at least say that it felt like a hit narratively, at least for an initial playthrough, but I'll admit that my enthusiasm for the game dwindled during my second playthrough, and I couldn't bring myself to finish a third since I was once again seeing a lot of similar content. Though, uh, I should note, since I nearly forgot, if you're a fan of Dark Side Detective, there's a little treat in here for you. Anywho, thanks for tuning in! If you agree, disagree, or just have something to say to me, feel free to comment. And if you enjoy my efforts to create new indie reviews, interviews, and gaming content, hit the subscribe button and the bell. For the Discord savvy folks, there's a link to my community, the Crit Hit Cauldron, in the video description. Also to my merch, and to my Patreon if you're curious to see reviews before they hit YouTube or just to support me and the other members of Crit Hit. Also to my Twitch if you want to see me get dunked on in any games live when I next stream. That said, I'll catch you on the next episode of Crit Hit. Take care till then, folks.